Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope you're all doing excellent. What I've been working on for most of the day today, trying to nail down some drivability issues. So, currently I don't have the tack working. Also, I'm not able to get the fuel level. The brakes need to be bled and the headlights are not working as well as the reverse lights for some reason. So obviously those things need to be working for safety and functionality of just driving a car around. So I've been trying to nail those things down. The first thing I wanted to start with was the fuel gauge um, because that has to do with a lot of the ignition on systems for the FC. And I noticed that the main relay was not clicking on as I was working through getting the car ready for seven stock. Thought maybe I had something wired wrong, but I had an extra main relay. Tried that, didn't work. Checked my fuses, my engine fuse inside the cabin was blown. Oh, okay, cool, that must be it. Check that, wrong, didn't help it. I'm sure it needed to be changed anyways, but eventually I ran things down and I realized the wire that comes from the main fuse relay, or main fuse that goes into the cabin and provides power at the ignition switch, for some reason did not have continuity. It, it has power coming off the fuse block, the fuse is intact, but as I chase it down through the wiring loom, uh, it just loses it. So I don't know if, the, if it broke, if there's a connection in there, but instead of chasing it down all the way through the wiring harness, I've decided to go straight from the battery, tap in, and get power that way. And my first experiments have worked to get the fuel level sensor reading and the gauge cluster all working. So let me show you what that looks like. So I found some old speaker power wire right here, and I just jammed that into the positive terminal end. Then over here, I actually did the right thing and I depinned this connection here. Now right now the wire is just wrapped around it. Uh, however, that seems to work. So right now I'm recharging the battery and I'm gonna tidy up these connections and then tuck everything away so it actually looks good. And then from there, since I have the dash mostly apart, you can't see it here, but this is just sitting on here. And I have the column cover off because I was looking at the ignition switch. I'm gonna go ahead and get the tachometer working by wiring the output from the Haltech ECU into the back of the gauge cluster right back here. So I'm gonna get started on those things for you. Now, before anyone gets upset and thinks I'm doing something dangerous because I'm not running off the fuse in the engine bay, I do have this inline fuse right here. It's actually an 80 amp rated fuse, which is the same as the factory fuse in the engine bay. I just got lucky because this is just a leftover uh, from an old installation I did for a stereo that I took out of the FC actually. And now we can use this wire here. It is eight gauge wire, which is a one step larger than what's supplying the uh, power to the steering column, but it should work just fine. Okay, so first step complete, got that wired in correctly for the power to the ignition switch. I'm going to go ahead and turn the lights on so you guys can see a little better on the dash here. And if I put the key in, turn it to on, I get the startup thing. I just heard the main relay click. And as you can see here, fuel gauge is reading out. So that is spectacular. Okay, so I was getting ready to wire it up so I can use the tachometer. And I said, all right, let me fire up the uh, Haltech, connect with my laptop, and uh, oh, this morning my laptop died. It just had a nice, easy death. It uh, started trying to load web page continuously, tried to shut it down the browser, Nothing really happened. Tried to power it off, control it, delete, nothing. It just sat there. Okay. So I powered it off, powered it back on, completely dead. I've gone through every recovery thing, everything that's an option on there. So needless to say, I ran out, got a new laptop, picked this guy up at uh, Costco. It was real cheap, um, well, relatively cheap. It's always cool to get new toys, but um, of course, Unexpected uh, expenses are not fun, but I've got the Haltech software loaded on here, so hopefully I can configure up the correct output for the tachometer. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot on this new device. 
All right, guys, so as you see, like I said, fuel's working. I attached the digital pulse output one on the Haltech to our ignition lead. And let's see how this goes. Fingers crossed. Oh, oh, oh. We got our PM, baby. Okay guys, so I want to show you where I tapped into for the ignition signal, just in case you're watching this as some sort of tutorial for your own FC. Now I have an S4 Turbo 2, and right here is the stock connector that comes off of um, your ignition harness as an output. So on this connector, there's four wires, you want to tap into the blue one, excuse me, you want to tap into the yellow one with a blue stripe on it. Okay, that's your wire right there. So what I've done is I just stripped the wire and jammed it in there to test it. Um, I'm obviously going to pin this out. I might even find the other end of the stock connector, splice this in there so it's a nice clean connection. Um, but just doing that right there and doing uh, 12 volts on pull-up setting in your DPL1 on the Haltech, set that up just right. And so you saw in the previous clip that we did have RPM reading and I verified it does match what the Haltech showed on its own display. So there you go. Okay, so one of the next things I want to do is get the new alternator that I purchased installed on the car. Now, I didn't originally have this as part of my plan uh, with the drivability issues because the old girl alternator is working fine as far as charging it. But one of the things I had to do was kind of jumper connection to the alternator output to the dash when I was dealing with trying to get this main relay and ignition on systems to work. A lot of write-ups online say you don't even need it, but as soon as I plugged it in, it started responding better, and I'm sure that we need to get those connected. So right now I have, let me show you. It's a little dark here because we are working on the lighting here in the garage, but let me see if I can show you. So right here, this red wire that comes out of the back, that goes directly to the battery terminal. And that's going to the voltage regulator. So what that's doing is telling the alternator when it needs to engage to charge the battery and disengage not to overcharge it. These two wires right down here, this one is not connected, but that is the stock wire that would go to that location. Now I don't get voltage off of that and I haven't tested with key on, so I'm gonna do that next. This one right here, I just have these two wound together and that is what is called, I believe, the L terminal connection for FC alternators. And that's what goes to the dash to give you, uh, I think, my car has a boost gauge, but the NA ones have a bolt gauge instead. And also it'll give you a warning light if the uh, alternator is not working correctly. But I think it does more than that. And as soon as I hooked it up, I started getting different reactions from the dash and the gauges. So I do want to wire that back in correctly. So I picked up this a little while ago. If you remember earlier on in the build, I tried a high-powered FD alternator. And I think this is an FD alternator that someone has modified um, because it does have the same pinout here as an FD alternator. However, they have pigtailed it out uh, for an FC plug. Now my plug is long gone, unfortunately, but I can still use those same terminals to uh, connect the wiring I do have and reconnect the stock wiring and see if that works. And it has the FC post here. And then if that works, this is a single pulley, but I did also buy a brand new dual pulley so we can get both belts running again.
Before everyone jumps down my throat, just know that this is the correct way to tension this. If you do not have an FD alternator bracket, and know that I've done this for years, and of the many things I broke on this car, I never broke the alternator. So just, or the water pump housing. So just look away if you don't like it. See? Nice and tight. Okay, let's give us some peace and quiet for a second. So all I did was I went back to the stock factory wiring. Black with white on the top terminal and white with black on the bottom terminal. And it worked. I think the reason it was not working before, if you saw some of my previous videos, is because the alternator just was not... The alternator just was not working. So I had to run this lead directly from the battery and the point of that was to give signal to the voltage regulator, but I was cutting out an important part of the wiring for the dash by disconnecting those pieces. But they are definitely working, and I was just dealing with multiple variables at once. So now we've got a working alternator. This is an upgraded alternator. This puts out, let's see if it says 130 amps. So hopefully this alternator will not only run our electric fan, which has already kicked on once off camera and it ran just fine, didn't even drop below 13.8 and our power steering which is an electric MR2 pump which is going to go in soon so next thing is probably going to be headlights all right so we're I'm working on diagnosing the headlight issue as I mentioned and I read through the forums a bunch and uh, the headlight switch can be a common problem cold solder joints not working well and I was told to check here before the relay. And if you, Jeff, can you show them the wall up there? Yep. The headlights are on right now. The motors always work, but as soon as we jumpered the connection inside the harness, it pretty much turned on. But if we shake it around, it's not doing it now because the camera's on, but there seems to be a loose connection because they weren't consistently coming on. So I'm just gonna clean up some of the connections with some uh, electric connection cleaner and just check the wires inside the harness. But good progress, because the lights are on. Yep. Okay, so now we got it consistently that the beautiful pop-ups are staying on. And let me show you what I got out of the connectors. So I just spray them with your regular old electric connection cleaner holding this behind them and that's all the junk that came out of it so i have no doubt that was the cause so now hopefully we can get the brakes bled and then we can drive this baby around so uh we'd like to bleed the brakes but it's up to this guy because i need a helper and he might still have to go to work since he's on call but in the meantime i have some rear rotors from R1 Concepts, so I figure we might as well put those on since we're going to bleed the brakes, because otherwise we'll have to bleed the bleh, bleh, bleh. we'll have to bleed the brakes again in the future. Yep. And it's a huge pain, so yep. might as well slap these on. Yep. Okay, so we got the hub and the carrier off, not the hub, but the uh, brake rotor, and um, I'm not changing the pads because I still have a lot of life on these Hawk HP pads and they're one of the things that do not deteriorate uh, on a car when sitting for a while is these HP pads. So I still have, again these rotors are from R1 Concepts, but I also have uh, 
semi-metallics from R1 Concepts to use in the future. So we have nice supply of brake pads. So I'm just gonna pop this rotor off. Should be able to swap this rotor on. Perfect. All right, and then we'll move to the other side. Okay, so we managed to get our R1 Concept rotors in there, and we did bleed the brakes back here, and we got a big burp of air, and then we got a nice um, encouraging result from the pedal, but then it went soft again. And the first time we bled the brakes, we did have a tr some trouble from the front driver's side um, brake caliper, and it was leaking a lot. So I don't know what's happened down here, but I'm going to go ahead and pull this off again. I'm wondering if it might be pulling in air or something. So I'm going to pop this wheel off and see what we can do. Okay, so we finished bleeding the brakes at the calipers, and we're not getting any bubbles. Straight fluid, going good. We're still getting a strange pedal feel. It'll pump up and be nice and firm. And then when you start the car and the brake, bo brake booster gets vacuum, it just gets kind of spongy. So I did a couple of things. Um, I changed from the factory hose clamps to, um, uh, which are just kind of like a preset clip, to screw down hose clamps. That's helping a little bit. Um, but then we found that there was a small leak from below the brake master cylinder. Jeff's taken off, so what I've done is I cleaned everything up and I put a towel down here. So hopefully I can check for leaks myself. I was able to tighten up the bottom fitting down here just about a quarter of a turn. Hopefully that does it. And I'm gonna check for it some more and also I think I might need to adjust the pedal inside the cabin. Uh, remember, I took everything on this car completely apart, so finding all these little nooks and crannies that might not be perfectly tightened or torqued is a bit expected, so I'm going to go ahead and check that now. Alright you guys, so it's a new day, and can you guess what this is? Some of you are probably already yelling at your screen for me to just take care of this. And you're probably right, this is a new master cylinder. So after bleeding the brakes, all four corners again. Um, <clears throat> messing around with the brake pedal adjustment, everything like that. It's basically the symptoms of a bad brake master cylinder. Just not keeping pressure. And this thing did sit for 12 years without it being moved and it's just a good idea to change it. Hopefully that fixes our problems and I think at this point it will. So I'm going to crack this baby out, I'm going to go bench bleed it off camera and I'm going to come back and get it installed. Okay, so I got it out. Here's the old one. Here's the new one. Whoop. The next thing I'm going to do, though, is uh, before I pop it in, I'm going to measure using my calipers the distance in uh, that this is supposed to go. Push rod that comes out of the brake booster because the brakes kind of feel like they might be on all the time a little bit and it's making it want to not be very drivable so I think I need to make some adjustment there so anyway I'm going to take a measurement here and try and adjust that so that the brakes are not just sitting there on while you're parked or trying to drive all right new master cylinder is all the way in everything's good um, because we installed that though we do have to re-bleed the brakes again but I just popped in the car just to press the pedal and see how it feels already feels different and we haven't even got the air out of the lines in fact when i'm pressing it i can hear the air moving in the lines so that's good it means it's uh, applying pressure so i also got on the way should be here by this evening from amazon uh, new pieces of vacuum line similar to this just in case these have some cracks i can't see i read uh, online a little bit that people are saying that these get dry, brittle, and cracked, and there can be cracks in here that you can't even really see that uh, you might as well replace it. So since we're working on this whole system, we'll get that done as well. 
Right now though, I need to get ready to go to Jeff's big graduation ceremony from welding school. So I'm gonna do that. And then when we get back, hopefully he's in the mood to help me bleed the brakes because I don't have a vacuum bleeder and this is still a two person job. All right guys, so Jeff is home after winning valedictorian at his graduation. Congratulations Jeff. Thank you. And uh, we successfully bled the brakes and we have firm pedal now. The brake booster engages, I rebuilt the front uh, vacuum lines that go to that just in case, but they look great and as you can hear the car is running. So I'm going to go give it a test drive around the block just to test those brakes, but the pedal actually feels like it does something now, so hopefully that master cylinder was all it took. Alright guys, so driving great, got a lot of drivability things sorted out today. I know it's not the most exciting content, but it's got to be done. Uh, thank you guys for watching and hopefully if somebody needs to see a video like this just because they're having a similar problem, maybe it'll be helpful for them as well. But we look forward to more exciting content coming in the future now that the car is getting more and more drivable every day. Please remember, like, comment, and subscribe. And when they ask you, tell them you want more.